So what you're looking at here is a code compliance sheet, and you can see that I've got some drawings here with uh, an indication of paths of travel, some other code information. And I've left this big blank space here because I want to put my code summary in that spot. Now I've got a few different options. I can create some static text just using the regular text tool here on the annotate tab. Um, that might not be a great way to go about doing this though because I'm not going to have a lot of options for organizing that text and formatting it. And if I ever even have to make any changes, it's going to be really difficult to change one section that then updates with everything else. Uh, another option that I have within Revit is I can go to the view tab and create a schedule and create something that's just basically about manually entered text. Um, but you may be thinking about a better tool for creating a table or some sort of organization of data uh, on a sheet like this, and that's outside of Revit, and that would be Microsoft Excel. So in this video, we're gonna look at how we can take that data from Microsoft Excel and get it into Revit for a situation like this where we wanna represent some code compliance. So in Excel, I've already created uh, the spreadsheet. And I'm not leveraging any of the more complex parts of Excel. Um, certainly if I was gonna get into some calculations and some of those other uh, sort of mathematic functions that would reinforce the idea of needing to use Excel in Revit. But uh, all I'm doing at a very basic level here is just taking advantage of some of the sort of graphic organization capabilities. And by that, I mean adding some borders, um, you know, introducing some line weights and perhaps even some line types. Um, but this is pretty simple. You can see that I've just got some basic rows, some basic columns. I've got some uh, organization over here on the left that indicates the category of the code. And I've got the particulars here. And then of course, I've got the actual specific uh, numeric reference over here on the right. And that might be all I need to do. So having set that up, I wanna now show you how you can get this table in this format and this appearance into Revit. It starts by, as you would assume, just doing a quick save. So I'm just gonna make sure that I do a save as and find the right name and the right location for it. I've already done that. Uh, once that's all set up, uh, I'm actually gonna turn this off. Um, there's a problem with reloading and linking in the next step of the process if this is left open. So making sure that I've done the save, I'm just going to click on the X here to turn off. And then somewhat counterintuitively, what I'm gonna do is go to AutoCAD. This is maybe the step, the part of the process that you wouldn't have anticipated, but this is necessary for getting it ready to go into Revit. So I'm gonna start a new file and I can do that either by just clicking on this little plus symbol here or in the upper left, clicking on the application menu and going to new. And then I'm gonna specify an ACAD.DWT template, but it really doesn't matter which template you use. If you don't have access to this one, as I said, you can just create a new file by just clicking on the little plus symbol here and then it'll use, I believe, whatever template you would use most recently. But I'm not worried about any of the scale issues that I'm typically worried with in AutoCAD when I do this. I really wanna just kind of create the appearance of that table and the scale and all those other things that you have to manage in AutoCAD aren't really an issue. This all begins on the annotate tab and over here on the tables panel, I'm just going to click here on link data. And when I click there, I'm gonna see the data link manager pop up. And if I click here on create a new Excel data link, and then just give it a name and I'll just call, call this my code summary table. I'll click okay. And then there's gonna be another window that pops up here asking me to locate the file that I wanna link. And if I had loaded that already, it would appear on this pull down, but because I haven't done that yet, it needs me to uh, just specify where that file is. So I'll click here on the button with the three dots and I will locate my Excel spreadsheet. I'll click open. And if I had my Excel spreadsheet open, I'd get a little prompt here saying that it couldn't link it because it doesn't want it to be open at the same time. So just be aware of that little warning that might pop up. Um, because it wasn't open, it proceeds. And the only other thing I have to do here is just specify the range. So you can see here that the default is to link the entire sheet. That can cause problems though, because it might try to fill in a whole bunch of empty cells from the spreadsheet that you don't wanna have uh, when you come into Revit. So I'm gonna click on link to range and I'm going to just enter A1 colon C26. And those are the sort of beginning and end cells in the Excel spreadsheet. So you might wanna make a note of those before you start doing the import. Uh, but I know that that represents the beginning and the end uh, of my spreadsheet cells. So I'm just gonna click on okay once that's all set up. And it's gonna to attempt to give me a little bit of a preview here. Some sometimes takes a few minutes or perhaps longer than you wanna wait. There we go. And uh, once that's done, then I can click okay. 
and it doesn't actually place it yet. That might be what you have, had expected from this uh, part of this process, but to actually place it, I have to click again on table, on that tables panel. And here's where, instead of going from an empty table, which is the default, I'm gonna specify that I wanna build from a data link. And then as you would expect, I can just use the pull down and find that data link that I had created in the previous steps. So code summary table, uh, it'll think now and eventually process uh, a preview as you can see, and there's nothing else I need to worry about. I'm gonna go with the default here, which is to specify the insertion point manually. So when I click okay, you'll see that that table is attached to the cursor. And I'm gonna kind of scroll over here and pan so that when I place the table, it's reasonably close to my zero, zero point, which is a good practice for AutoCAD. So you can see here that the X, Y origin, uh, I'm reasonably close to that. So when I bring it in, it's not gonna give me any sort of strange, you know, distant placement of the table in Revit. I can actually modify the format of this a little bit in AutoCAD. If I, for whatever reason, felt like I needed to kind of make these tables a little bit larger, the individual columns can be expanded. Uh, so you can see here a number of grips that would allow you to change the general sort of size and proportions of the table. I don't have that option when I get into Revit. So this is maybe uh, a good step here for the process that in AutoCAD I can make a few edits that I wouldn't otherwise be able to make in Revit. So once I've got it looking the way that I want, then of course I'll do a save as, back to the application menu in the upper left, do a save as, and of course this is just gonna be a regular DWG file and I'll give it a name. I've got a few of these in my folder here already because I've run through this in practice, but I'm just gonna call this, let's say code summary table new. Let's see if I can remember that long name when I get to the next step. So I'll click save and now it's ready to bring into Revit. So back in Revit, again on the sheet uh, where I've got some code drawings already and I wanna place it in this space. I don't place it right here. I actually have to create a new view and then I'll bring it from that view onto the sheet. And that new view is going to be a drafting view. Drafting views uh, are just basically generic two-dimensional views in Revit that don't necessarily have a link to any of the 3D geometry. So you're free to kind of create whatever you want in the drafting views and then drag them onto a sheet like you normally would. So on the view tab, I'll click drafting view and uh, I can give it a name if I like. I'll call it code summary again. And uh, the scale will be one to one. That's not gonna worry quite as much as you might think. Um, I'll click okay. Oh, I've already got that one in the file. So I have to just do new, I'll click okay. And now it takes me to the drafting view. Now my browser's set up a little bit different. So you might not see drafting view in this exact spot, but scroll down in your browser. You'll see that drafting view is highlighted. You can see the bold text. That indicates that you're in the drafting view. And now what I'll do is go to the insert tab and I want to link the CAD. So it's important that you don't do an import CAD. That would be a one-time import. And we want to keep the link live, anticipating that we're going to do some further edits in Excel. So if I click link CAD and then of course navigate to where I stored that file and let's see how good my short-term memory here is tracking down uh, that file again. And once I've located that, then of course I'll, I'll make a few little edits down here at the bottom once I've got that ready. There we go. That seems to be the one that I'm after. And uh, I like to change the colors to black and white, just in case there happen to be any kind of light colors in the AutoCAD file. Uh, they show up terribly on the white background in Revit. So I wanna make sure that I don't have any of those kind of light faint colors. So black and white, everything else I can just kind of take at default values. I'll click open. And then you'll see that that table appears down below here. And when I scroll in, in on it, you can see that I have all the information that was uh, originally uh, loaded up in Excel. Now that it's in the drafting view, I can go back to my sheet and of course, just locate that drafting view and drag it onto my sheet. So I'll just click over here in my browser, drag, and then place it on the sheet. Now you'll notice that when I place it on the sheet, uh, the default is that it's gonna give me these kind of typical uh, view titles. Now, sometimes I want those, sometimes I don't. You can see that I've got a few other elements on the sheet here that don't have the view titles. And <clears throat> to make that kind of display possible, all I have to do is click on any one of these other views on the sheet. And you can see that when I do that, the type that's displayed is the viewport type. It has nothing to do with what's actually in the viewport. So when I change the properties for that type, 
uh, all I'll be doing is just changing the way that this viewport window appears. And that being the case, I can click on one, edit the type, make a duplicate, and then in the duplicated type, and I'll just accept the default as it is there, I'll click OK, and then all I have to do is just change this property right here. So instead of the default, which shows the view title, it'll show me a viewport without the view title. And I'm just going to hit cancel because I've already created one of these. And uh, as you can see here, this is another viewport showing me this little legend. And if I click on edit type, you can see that I changed the yes to no. So now, like I said, it's still a viewport, but instead of showing that view title, it doesn't. And so all I have to do now is just click on my uh, newly placed table and change the type associated with the viewport. So instead of having a viewport title with line, I'm going to make this uh, a viewport title without line. And now you can see that that goes away. And I'm just relying, of course, on the text in the actual table. So that's the process for getting it in there. Uh, if I want to change anything about this, um, I could go back to my drafting view. And I do have the ability here to do some scaling. As I said, when I was uh, in AutoCAD, I don't have the ability to modify each individual row or column, but I can scale the entire object. Um, but if I need a little bit more control, or of course, if I need to make any further modifications, I would need to go back to Excel and then kind of run through the process again. So just to kind of wrap things up, I'll show you what that would look like, just to kind of test this out and make sure that the link is working properly. Uh, back in Excel, and I have to open that up, of course, because I closed it prior to going to AutoCAD. I'm going to open up that same file once again. And uh, just to show the edit, I guess, or, or the ability to make edits, I'm just going to enter some random text in this cell down here. And I'll maybe make it a little bit bold with a different font just so we can see it a little bit more clearly, something that looks a little bit bolder than what I've got. And then what I'm going to do, of course, is I'm going to save the file. And for some reason, uh, like before, in, auto, in order for AutoCAD to read this property, uh, it seems to want the file to be closed. So I'm just going to, have, after having saved it, close it, go to AutoCAD again. And notice what happens in AutoCAD once I've done that save. It gives me an indication down here in the bottom right that the data has changed in that linked file. So I'll just click on that blue highlight there. You'll see these uh, scroll bars down here at the bottom kind of uh, animated here. And there we go. It just indicates that it's updating that spreadsheet. You can see the new text in that cell where there didn't used to be any. I'll do a save, of course, in AutoCAD. And once that's done, then I can go back into Revit. And you'll see in Revit here now that I have the ability on my Insert tab to manage links. So what I'm going to do is scroll in real close and see where that text should appear. I'll click on Manage Links. Kind of pull that off to the side a little bit so we can see the update as it occurs. And I'll click on CAD formats and select the DWG file and reload. It'll think a little bit and then you'll be able to see that new text appearing in just a moment here. So I'll click OK. There we go. So that's how we can add some Excel spreadsheet data to our sheets and uh, keep the link live so that we can do some further edits. Thanks for watching. Hope that helped. And uh, if you like what you saw, please leave some comments below and consider subscribing. We'll see you in the next video.